All right, let's talk about the number one thing that you must do before every trade. And that is an emotions pre-mortem. I often talk about the post-mortem in trades. And of course, I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight. But what's even more important than the post-mortem is the pre-mortem. And that's making sure you've got the best setup and you're feeling that F yeah and all. And even more important than that is an emotional checkup. Now, as I often say, is present Dave going to make future Dave angry? And I like what Craig in the group, in the Facebook group said, is present Craig going to make future Craig broke? And you have to do a little bit of time travel and think about how are you going to feel if the trade ends miserably, as sometimes they do. And if you're feeling a little angst and animosity or whatever, then maybe it's a trade that you shouldn't take. Now, digging a little deeper, or you to cause any future regrets. And there's a couple of future regrets that you could have. In the present, there's a fear of missing out. And that's also known as FOMO. Now, when that FOMO becomes realized, especially when you miss out on a fantastic trade that you should have taken, that becomes the reality of FOMO, the pain of missing out. So you really have to weigh now versus in. Is it a purely is it purely a FOMO trade where you just have a fear of missing out? Or is it more of something that you know if you don't take the trade, you're going to have to deal with the pain of missing out? Now, I'm not saying pass on a mediocre trade and then be pissed off because it took off without you. You have to come to grips with, with reality and say, you know what, this wasn't that great of a trade to begin with. I'm okay with it not working or it working out without me. And and believe me, it's it's hard, but that's kind of a, a case where you're you're kind of getting into that that true enlightenment, not to go all freshman psychology on you, but you're getting a little further up that Maslow's hierarchy of needs when you finally reach that kind of self actualization point. Now I hate to say this, but I, I'm guessing a lot of Christians are like this, and I guess I can currently call myself a Christian, but I've kind of struggled my whole life with it. And at one point, and it's kind of a long story, but my wife fosters. Computer just started talking to me. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, where do you see, well, thank you, George. George says you rock. Where do you see in a little while? You got post of the week. <laughs> so stay tuned. So, you know, this is one of those things where I don't know whether I should share or not, but I'll share. I tend to, I tend to overshare. I've kind of struggled with my Christianity, and I'm guessing like most Christians do, on and off their entire lives, and, and a lot of questions we have. And one thing that kind of helped me wrap my head around it was, Pascal's wager. It's kind of a long story, but my wife forced me to go to church once <laughs> after I nearly killed a family and totaled the car. And I'm like, you know, I couldn't argue with that one. And through going to church, I met someone that I became friendly with, and he taught a Bible class. And I actually ended up teaching the class at some point, at least as an assistant here and there. But one of the things that he talked about was Pascal's wager. And that's something I never thought about. Well, Pascal's wager on the positive side says, this is your time spent on earth, okay? And if you believe for that tiny, tiny, tiny bit of time, 
either there is a God or there's not a God, but if you believe there is a God, for argument's sake, let's assume that he does exist, then you have an eternal bliss. Now, I did look it up earlier. There is a downside to this thing, too. I guess it's like eternal damnation. But let's just assume that all you have to do is believe, and then you get eternal bliss, right? So it's a very small thing to wager if you think about it, considering the payoff. Now, a trader's wager for a, a POMO type of trade, okay, to avoid the pain of missing out. And at the last minute, I, an I added this in. This is on at the yeah trades only. And as I've said a thousand times, when I'm going through my charts every night, chart after chart after chart, a couple thousand charts, the best stocks tend to jump out at me. And I tend to have that F yeah feeling. And if it takes me an hour or two and I can't find a stock to save my life, there's probably not a whole lot of action to be taken. So on the F yeah trades where you feel like you have to take it, you'd be a fool not to take it. This is your potential loss. And there is the potential for eternal bliss. Now, that's not on every trade, obviously. But as I've said before, it's like when I ride bikes by the marina and I'm looking at the sailboats, I occasionally will think, you know, if I'd have just taken that TLR Y trade that ran up to 300 points, 1,000 shares here, 1,000 shares there, I could have bought one or two of those posts, you know, one or two of the bigger ones. So that's something that the pain of missing out can be can be a really, really tough thing. Now, as I've said before, and I'm going to touch upon quite a bit tonight, is the perception of the future is the here and now, okay? And the reality is the future. Now, there's a whole science that wraps around this, and there's a lot of behavioral science and behavioral finance that wraps around this, too. And just to give you a couple examples, if you are, if you have things that you're looking forward to, okay, and that's one of the secrets to being happy. And and if you're like me, we all we all get a little bummed out every now and then, especially with Mark, especially this crazy business we found ourselves in. And one of the secrets to being happy is to always have something to look forward to. Have you ever looked forward to something you're really excited about it, and the reality was, eh, it really wasn't that great. Well, that's not a total loss because you did release some positive endorphins and dopamine and such thinking about that future event, looking forward to that future event. So there's two different things at work. So let's say before you go into the trade, there's a lot of excitement, but once you get into trade, it becomes a reality. Years ago, I knew someone who was a trader, and I didn't quite see it at the time, but in hindsight, he's a very arrogant person, <laughs> to put it mildly. And he was telling me that he does the analysis and he puts on the trade, and then his wife does the management of the trade. And Initially, I was kind of thinking, maybe kind of based on some of the things he said that, oh, wow, you're doing all the hard work, and, and then she just comes in after you do the everything and just manages a trade. And then he said, well, she just can't pull the trigger. Well, pulling the trigger is easy. I mean, you can ask Alec Baldwin. Is it too soon? Sorry. <laughs> anyway, it's a lot harder managing that trade and dealing with that trade and dealing with the aftermath, good or bad, I guess, of that trade than it is to put on that trade. 